Are you considering building a home from dirt? If so, you're probably going to end up paying a little bit more and, well, negotiating can be a little bit tough. We are going to talk about new build strategy today and when you should possibly maybe even walk away from buying a home. A lot of people don't know the difference between new builds and dirt starts or an inventory new build home. Oftentimes we talk about new construction as inventory homes being the best deal, but maybe, just maybe, there are deals to be had in the building from the dirt up start. So what's up everyone? It's Kayleen Zabadek and Lori Derrickson, my business partner, will be on here in a bit. We are from Colorado's Finest Agency here in Denver, Colorado, and we're one of your top relocation teams in the Denver area. If you're ready to buy in the Denver market or looking at an investment in the real estate market in the Denver area, put those numbers into your phone and reach out. So when you think about new build construction, typically, typically we all know that what you're going to get a lower price with a quick move in home that's already been built. Especially when you're looking at the end of a builder's fiscal year, they often want to get the, that inventory off of their books. So before we jump in, let's talk about the difference between an inventory new build home and a traditional dirt start new build home. When we refer to existing or inventory new build home, we're talking about homes that are already in production. So this meaning, meaning that the builder has already picked out the lot, picked out the model, a lot of times they've already picked out the finishes and all of the design aspects of the home. Typically the completion time is anywhere between two to three months or maybe they're sitting there ready for move-in. When we refer to a dirt start build, we are talking about a home which you get to build from the actual ground up. You pick out the lot and you get to pick out all of its features anywhere from structure to the finishes. So keep in mind you will need to make sure you are aware of a lot of premiums in this case because in an inventory home those costs are already factored into that price. Along with any other upgrades that the builder has put in because they already picked it, that out and the builder has already stated that in their build sheet and then so reflecting in the list price. However, in a dirt start, you may be shown a starting price of the home, but keep in mind pricing will go up from there. You are choosing many different features as the home gets built, and so that is always just compiling on or adding to the cost. So you want to make sure when you are pricing up the home that you are considering all of those structural upgrades, maybe the kitchen pick upgrades, the design center upgrades, and oh yeah, the lot premium, just in case we didn't mention that. So keep in mind that that can start to add up relatively quickly. Hey everyone, it's Lori Derrickson here. So I get to jump in now and talk about the next point here. So often the deals come with inventory homes because the builder is losing money on that house that is complete and just sitting there. And they are, they're ready to make a deal, right? So there are occasions when starting from scratch is the most logical approach though. Consider the scenario where you need to sell your existing home before purchasing a new one. This situation is known as the home sale contingency. In cases where you're interested in purchasing a newly constructed house and are subject to the sale of your home, it's called a home sale contingency, and it becomes highly challenging to benefit from a discounted inventory home. This is unless you're able to financially qualify for both properties simultaneously, which is often impractical for the majority of individuals and buyers. It's important to recognize that the attractive deals on inventory homes arise because builders are eager to complete that sale swiftly and remove that property from their accounts. Essentially, inventory homes represent a financial burden for these builders, prompting them to offer favorable deals for quick sales. However, if a buyer is constrained by a home sale contingency, this can prolong the closing process or potentially lead to a failed sale. 
Builders typically prefer to avoid contingency offers. In fact, most aim to close the sale of their inventory homes in less than four weeks after the contract is signed. Regrettably, for those who need to sell their current home before they can purchase, there are only a couple of viable options and both may be less than ideal. The first option involves foregoing the home sale contingency and hoping that miraculously your current home sells within the four week time frame. However, this approach is generally not recommended for buyers as it often places your earnest money at risk. This strategy doesn't seem particularly appealing. The second option requires selling your home first and temporarily being without a home for a month or so during that process and pur of purchasing your new inventory home. This approach entails navigating a variety of challenging logistics. You'll need to consider where to stay during this period with your family, or maybe you're staying with in-laws, or maybe an Airbnb or hotel. Additionally, you have to deal with storing all your belongings and the hassle of moving twice in a short time span. As if moving once isn't stressful enough, this option doubles the inconvenience. So regardless of your chosen approach, purchasing an inventory home while needing to sell your, currently, your current home first is inevitably stressful. So this process involves managing complex timelines and possibly facing some inconveniences. In some instances, we assist our buyers in securing a contract on their current home first, ensuring that it passes all of the potential hiccups, um, such as inspection and appraisal. Only then do we actually embark on finding that new suitable inventory home and attempt to synchronize the closing dates. So this approach is challenging, but it's feasible. Alternatively, if you're considering the option of a new build home from scratch or that dirt start, changes, it changes the dynamic of the new build significantly. So building a new home usually takes a minimum of six months and a lot of times goes about 10 months. This extended time frame allows for a much more relaxed process. You can actually dedicate your time to enhancing your current home, getting it ready for list, and then it also gives you time to evaluate and you know find that ideal buyer when you get offers coming in without the urgency that the other situation might force you into. In Denver, some of the builders accept contingencies on new build construction while others do not. Therefore, it's crucial to arrange or at least talk to a, a lender, you know, consider financing before you even start that new build process. If you're keen on selecting your own finishes and choosing the perfect lot, and you want your home to be exactly like the model, then you need to be able to commit probably about eight to 12 months for that dirt start build. Undertaking a new build is definitely a venture we're striving for, and it often involves a very engaging and rigorous negotiation. So you might wonder why better deals are often available on inventory homes compared to new builds. Isn't the goal of builders to sell as much as possible in both scenarios? The difference lies in the payment timeline. With new builds, buyers won't receive payment until at least six to 10 months later. They anticipate that that property value will rise in the interim. So in their view, selling at the current market value already incorporates a discount. So regarding new builds, the builder bears all the risk, particularly considering the potential rise in material costs and inflation during that six to 12 month construction period. In a dirt start scenario, the builder has already locked in a fixed price through that contract, making this method less preferred for selling homes from their perspective. Nevertheless, there are strategies for negotiating on new builds although it's a generally more challenging process. One tactic is to target a subdivision that's just beginning development. Such areas might initially appear as unimpressive, muddy fields, hardly the picturesque view that you might have envisioned. However, builders are aware that prospective buyers perceive it like this way. Opting for a home in a newly developing community where ongoing construction will be the norm for years can be less appealing to many. Due to this lower demand, there's a possibility of securing a better deal in these adjacent neighborhoods. 
In these early stages of a subdivision, builders are unlikely to have any inventory homes ready to sell. The, to, to make any sales, they require buyers who are prepared to take a leap of faith. Builders are usually more willing to negotiate at a sale at this price point in the early phase. However, it's important to remember that living in such a development area means enduring construction traffic for at least a year, possibly longer, while also potentially paying HOA fees without enjoying that associated amenities that come along with it. So another strategy is to explore communities where several builders offer homes at similar price points. In this scenario, don't hesitate to play one builder against another. It sometimes can lead to a discount that you're looking for, although it's not guaranteed. The key to this is to remain flexible and open-minded and consider various floor plans and builders without becoming emotionally invested into one particular option. It's possible that a builder may not offer a discount immediately, but as circumstances change in the following months, it they could come back around and offer that uh, discount that you're looking for. So it's advisable to avoid discussing extensive design details with the sales consultant on your first visit. You want to secure deals as they come in first and don't show too much eagerness or reveal your complete intentions because that can really weaken your negotiating position. We methodically negotiate between different and various builders, pointing out instances where maybe one builder includes a certain feature as a standard and another doesn't, or maybe highlighting the differences in pricing for a very similar sized home. This strategy often helps leverage to get you the best deal possible. Another approach is to monitor multiple developments by the same builder. So for instance, if you're interested in homes built by maybe Richmond Homes, Century Home, or maybe another preferred builder, you wanna explore various communities where they're currently building. You wanna engage the sales consultant from these different locations in maybe a subtle competition. They too sometimes are keen on making their sales. So recently we employed this technique with homes by Century Communities, and we assisted a buyer who was exploring the northeastern Denver area, and we informed them that we were considering multiple communities comparing the offers and prices for each specific home, and we successfully negotiated a favorable deal for our client. To effectively employ these strategies, being prepared to walk away is essential. Remember, in Denver, there are constantly thousands of new construction options emerging. If a particular community is inflexible, but you're persistent in negotiating and continue your search, you're likely to find a suitable option for you and your family. However, if you become too emotionally attached to a single home, and we've seen this, you might miss out on a better deal. So navigating negotiations with builders is a demanding task, and that's where our expertise comes in. We engage in this process daily, and we excel at it. If you're considering a new build, we st strongly recommend checking out our questionnaire available in the description below in this section. It's designed to save you both time and money, and we're confident it will. So understanding that negotiating with builders can be challenging, it's important to consider other tactics when they're not reducing those prices to our satisfaction. So let's revisit the fundamental concept of a new build to explore alternative strategies. In a new build, Dirt Start, you have the opportunity to choose your lot and the size of your home. As I've mentioned in my other video, when purchasing a home, it's advantageous to be the smaller house amid, amidst those larger ones. Being surrounded by bigger homes increases the desirability and value of your property. And this approach can lead to greater equity gains. Purchasing a custom new build home presents a unique opportunity. You have the liberty to choose your various aspects of that new, new home. This means that even in a neighborhood with predominantly larger houses, there might be a chance for you to find a suitable and affordable option. Don't discount such areas. They could be the one, just what you're looking for. So you want to begin by exploring available lots in your desired area, particularly those ones with no or low lot premiums. Then you want to investigate the most affordable home models 
that the builder offers. So keep in mind that there's often a wide range and variety of models to choose from. Um, opt for the smaller models and that way it ensures that the surrounding homes are larger and at the end more expensive. This strategy can significantly increase your home's value. You will also want to consider selecting a smaller home with options like maybe an unfinished basement, which then can be finished later and almost double your living space. Let's say you've chosen a specific model, for example, maybe with Richmond, um, the model with the 1,700 square feet. If this model is being built in multiple communities in Northeast Denver, you can strategically choose a community with larger, more expensive homes to then maximize your investment potential. In Denver, there are several builders that construct homes in diverse communities ranging anywhere from south to north to east to even west. Even communities located just blocks apart can vary significantly in price due to the neighborhood's reputation. This is common in areas like Castle Rock, Parker, Lakewood, and Aurora. So navigating through the multitude of builds, models, different builders, the lots, the builders' representatives, it can be quite daunting. So with Colorado's Finest Agency, we help specialize in new construction and we can help guide you in identifying the best builder and we know what quality of work that those builders offer versus those with maybe lower standards. Some builders, unfortunately, may have a predominantly negative review, and that's probably not the kind of partner you want to work with when looking at builders. All right, so now we're gonna discuss equitable title. In a market where home values consistently rise, you're not just purchasing a new build at its current value, but rather what it will be worth in six to 12 months from now. When you lock in that price with a the builder, they're committed to that price, even as home values rise and building costs increase. So equitable title refers to your right to full ownership of a property at the agreed price, even though the home isn't built yet. As the home increases in value, all that equity is yours, not the builder's. While you might not get a large discount up front, the benefit of equitable title is significant. Imagine if you sign a contract today for a new build dirt start home in Denver and plan to close 10 months from now. During this period, the home value increases by 30000 This additional equity is yours. It's already yours, effectively allowing you to build equity even before the finalization of your home. I'm personally actually doing this right now, this strategy with the townhome in the Colorado Mountains. I entered into a contract for this price on a home in January 2023 with we have a closing date set for March of 2024, based on the market rate at the time of contracting. But we're gonna fast forward to January today of 2024, February 2024, and currently right now an identical home in the same development contracted for 50,000 more than my contract price that I contracted on back in January of 2023. So this difference translates to $50,000 of equity gained for me and my family without incurring the cost of mortgage, mortgage insurance, or all the other expenses with the HOA. And I accumulated that over the 12 to 14 month construction period. So let's explore different negotiation tactics we have used personally in our real estate business for Dirt Start for new builds with our clients. Often new build companies are part of larger corporations with offices elsewhere. For example, recently, skill, recently we negotiated a contract with Campbell Homes for a client and throughout the process we remain patient and emotionally detached, we said that right, and fully prepared to walk away if necessary. Our efforts resulted in not only securing a higher lending incentive, but also negotiating a $20,000 kitchen upgrade and an additional $5,000 for our clients at the design center, significantly surpassing the builder's initial offer. This achievement required persistent negotiation with the builder and the representative, our client, and that company's national corporate office. Another negotiation avenue involves appliances, landscaping, window coverings, which are often overlooked by our home buyers during the planning phase of a new build. In Denver, for instance, landscaping alone can cost upward of $30,000 plus for a standard new build lot. Additionally, the cost of essential appliances like a new refrigerator, 
washer and dryer can exceed well over 6,000, and window coverings also represent a substantial expense that you're not anticipating. These are critical areas where negotiations can yield significant savings for you, our client. Recently, one of our clients had set aside funds for that new build and was unprepared for the additional $40,000 need, needed for landscaping, window coverings, and appliances. So we successfully negotiated these costs into the contract, effectively saving our client close to $40,000 at close. So next, you might be wondering about the cost of, an empl of employing a real estate agent during the new build process. Well, the truth is it costs you nothing. There are no savings to be had by forgoing an agent and builders do not offer discounts for not having one. So it's important to have an agent for a new build on a construction home, especially, especially in a market like Denver. So keep in mind, builders are often large corporations and primarily focused on their bottom lines and their profits, not necessarily the best interest for you, the buyer. So if you close a home with Colorado's finest agency in 2024, you can take advantage of our big green box promotion. So not only do you get to work with us, one of the best relocation teams to the Denver area when you reach out, but at closing, you get to choose from six luxury closing gifts. So in your new home, you can have an 86 inch 4K TV or maybe a brand new snowblower for the Denver snow. Or maybe you just wanna indulge and get a Louis Vuitton bag. Make sure to reach out to us today and we can help answer all of your questions on moving to Denver and new build options. We would love to help you make Dem your move to Denver and you all you have to do is go ahead and reach out and put those numbers into your phone. Make sure to also check out our five-star Google reviews here at Colorado's Finest Agency. And for now, we are out from Colorado.